Hello, the following video you are about to watch is an extract from my new course and book, Atomic Note-Taking. So enjoy the video, and if you want to check out more about the course, go to atomicnotetaking.com. So the Zettelkasten system. Each note should be made atomically. This means you should aim for one idea per note. And I know what you're thinking, as I've written it down here, wait, just one single idea? Uh, yes. And the motivation is relatively simple. It is that the simpler the idea, the easier it is for you to reason about it, to recall it, to link to it, and to reuse in any projects. So what does that really mean? What does it look like? So here's an example. I might be writing about critical thinking and in my notes, I would probably have a description, a definition of what it is. This means if I introduce the subject into a piece of teaching, into an article, I can say, how do I articulate what critical thinking is? So I just bring that note in and say, okay, here it is. Critical thinking is about making informed and considered decisions by using objective analysis and evaluations. So that is one idea on here. It is a definition of what it is and it's now easy for me to explain. Now, there are two parts to this. There's a title. I've called this critical thinking. Now you could think, well, that's a whole subject. That's a whole topic and you wouldn't be wrong. But a note generally has a title and how you articulate that title, we will go into more detail because there are pros and cons of different techniques. For the illustration here, I've gone really simple. I'm just saying, if I have a note on critical thinking, I've called it that and I've given a definition. And then a note also has the contents. It could be a brief description of the topic, critical thinking in this case, but the content, uh, the contents can of course range, um, be a range of things. So um, we might have critical thinking, we might have the benefits of critical thinking, we might have the drawbacks, we might have how to use it, where it came from, the origin, all these different things. Um, then we might relate critical thinking, critical thinking in business, critical thinking in the classroom. So it's really uh, a way to break down the different ways of looking at the same subject into their atomic nature. So one idea per note. Now, this is a really small, simple note. That does not mean your notes will always be this small and always be this simple. You can add examples. You can maybe add ways of supplementing that idea. That is fine. It's still atomically written. You're just supporting it with more information. Just be mindful at some point, those ideas, those extra uh, supplementary information to clarify might be worthy of a note on their own, particularly if you want to link to just the, uh, just the supplementary information. But don't worry about that just now. Um, so what does it look like then when we want to create multiple notes and we want to start thinking of our subject in a sequence? I'm learning about critical thinking. Therefore, I get introduced to what it is and then we may break that down into the more core meaning of some of those parts. So in this case, we might have a note on being able to, you know, judging on your own merits. So what does that mean? As a note on its own, it means that, you know, critical thinking is to remove the bias and judge things on their own merit. Then we might have like critical thinking techniques. So this is how you would apply it in different scenarios. You might have the benefits of critical thinking. So if you were trying to promote it, to teach it to someone else, why should someone consider it? And you might have the origin of critical thinking. Um, so in this case, you know, it goes back to the teaching of Socrates, you know, through the Socratic questioning. Um, so yeah, additional ideas are given their own note and added to the sequence. So you can now see that my topic of critical thinking starts building up note by note. And if I'm reading a book on say critical thinking, these notes would generally what would be what come out of it. So I would have my raw capture and now in my in my atomic notes, in my literature notes, I'm starting to build up just the ideas that they have and then relate them together. So that's an example of a really simplistic type of note. And hopefully this is now something you can see, okay, 
in my own notes, in my own note taking, how could I try this method out? What would that look like? So I encourage you to go and go and give it a go on some notes that you have and start breaking them down and spotting where one idea starts and the next idea starts and where that split is and then you can link them together. So if this was an analog Zettelkasten, so analog being a physical one, you could imagine each of these being their own index notes, which is absolutely fine. And then you would put them together, stack them together and put them in your filing system. OK. Now I've gone back around the subject of really just one idea on a note. And the reason I say this is because in teaching this on YouTube, this has come up again it's, and it's been phrased in different ways like but a book i'm reading might have multiple ideas how do i how do i how do i have different how do i do that like so it's about understanding the essence of what we're trying to achieve here um, as long as you understand the reason why so that you can take a note in isolation so that you can put just one of those ideas into say a blog post and then write around it and it makes sense um, then that is a good lens to know what that difference is between a note that's getting too big versus an atomic note. Um, so uh, really this explains the benefits. We've covered that quite a bit um, in, in the way I've been presenting this in the course, um, but by all means read, read the book for some more supplementary reasoning behind that. Now you might have long notes and you want to convert them into atomic notes and that probably is where you're going to start from especially if you've created your fleeting notes that have got quite long um, uh, so yeah when comparing to traditional note taking like you've got a, a master note that's like critical thinking or maybe it's the title of the book that you've just read or something and you've used the outline method um, which is exactly how I do things uh, so the question is what do you do? So this would be an example of a raw fleeting note on critical thinking. You've got your introduction. You know, you do not have the time or energy to challenge the status quo. Uh, you know you will face opposition from other people. Therefore, you will end up making a solid plan, but one which will not make too many waves or provide necessary change. So you can see how it's built up. And then you've got like, what is critical thinking? So this is, you know, it's something that Socrates taught his youngest and brightest to question all assumptions, but some don't like being questioned. So you can see how there's this kind of mismatch of ideas all put into one note. This isn't very actionable. I can't do much with this because I haven't reasoned about it. I haven't organized it um, and I haven't sort of rewritten it in my own words in that way. So what would this look like now? So Breaking it down, we could have critical thinking as a high level topic. So critical thinking is about making informed and considered decisions. Then we can have like a opposition to critical thinking, judging things on their own merits. See, in this case, we have, you know, how would that look? Critical thinking is to remove the bias by judging it on its own merit. You want to strip back the opinion, speculation and misleading information to assess it on its own, um, which is actually how I think of literature notes. You, know, you want to be thinking of the material on its own, take away the opinion, take away the speculation, any misleading information, does it hold up? Now you can give an example. So this is an, is an atomic idea, but you can supplement it with an example such as, you know, the government has improved the economy might be a statement that you come across. And you could say, ah, oh, but yeah, the government's improved the economy. Of course, they're, they're a good government and all of that. But you want to ask questions about the definition of improved, for example. That is critical thinking. And which time frame was it measured? And how the statistics were gathered and what information has been omitted in the assessment. So it is an example of how you can use critical thinking in a real world scenario so that now when you're thinking, okay, how do I judge something on its own merits? It's giving you an example to do that. And that is an atomic note, which is kind of a subsection of critical thinking as a topic as a whole. You may have more. So reasons for opposing critical thinking. So why would someone challenge you? You know, what techniques can you use? The straw man argument, you can bring that in. Uh, the benefits of critical thinking, you know, the origin of critical thinking, you can keep going on and on and on. So this 
is the atomic ideas that come out of your research on a given topic, like critical thinking. And I like to point to the straw man argument because that one is a derived piece of understanding, a derived idea from the core topic where you're pulling in other things around that don't sit wholly in critical thinking and that's fine so so this this idea note this note here isn't necessarily a subset of critical thinking you just discovered it through studying critical thinking so i i think that's really uh, really powerful there so so yeah that is kind of an idea of how to break down your long notes into uh, into their atomic notes and then we'll um, cover kind of some more questions that you may be having at this stage.